Hello, my name is Juliane Ribeiro da Cruz. I'm going to present this study about materials for thermionically emitting electrodes in arc welding. This study was developed with and under the orientation of Professor Américo Scott at the Federal University of Paraná. So this is the outline of our presentation. First, we'll present the scenario that motivated this study, the challenge that is basically the goal of our study, the viability requirements of non-consumable electrode materials, the methodology we applied, our main results and conclusions, a link for extra information, and the acknowledgements. Thermionic emission is the electron emission known to happen from hot bodies. TIG welding and graphite air gouging have been taking advantage of this phenomenon for a long time. Thermionic emission has been traditionally described by Richard Son Dushman equation that, in summary, determines the maximum current density produced by thermionic emission as a function of the material work function and temperature. Thus, unlike common thoughts, thermionic emission can happen at low temperatures, yet the current density is low. This suggests that other materials besides tungsten and graphite can emit thermionically. But why are not other materials used as non-consumable electrodes in welding? So our challenge was to verify and to demonstrate theoretically the viability of using iron as a non-consumable electrode material by comparing its emission characteristics to the demanded characteristics of thermionically emitting non-consumable electrodes. As viability requirements, non-consumable electrodes must conduct current at usual welding range, have appropriate dimensions to assure accessibility and portability, keep their integrity at working temperatures, and be heated up to emission temperatures by the welding process. In our methodology, First, we calculated the current density for different materials at melting and boiling temperatures through richardson dushman equation. Then, we calculated the emission areas required to produce usual current values at the current densities previously determined. Then, we calculated the electrode's diameter based on the above determined emission areas. Then we determined the temperatures reached by these electrodes and assessed the material's conformity to the viability requirements for these studied conditions. For the electrode diameter calculation, first we calculated the current density by richardson dushman equation as a function of temperature and work function. Then we calculated the emission area required to produce uh, usual current intensities. We considered the emission area to be the complete, the complete surface of a cone at the tip of the electrode, although we know that emission doesn't usually occur occurs in all of the surface, it is a reasonable assumption because we are determining the minimum diameter to produce a given current intensity. We also calculated the diameter of the electrode as a function of the grind angles. Focusing on the electrode heating, we observed that there are several factors that affect affect heat generation and increase the electrode temperature while there are other factors that causes, cause heat consumption and decrease the electrode temperature and it's a very complex task to evaluate the, the contribution of each of these factors 
in the electoral temperature, so we did some simplifications. We considered that the heat generation was only by Jolly effect, and we studied the generation during arc ignition, the heat generation during arc ignition. We considered also that this heat was completely used in increasing the temperature of the electrode by sensible heating. To the methodology we used to calculate the electrode final temperature was first we calculated the electrical resistance using a estimated electrode length and the materials resistivity. We also had to previously calculate electrode diameters for the production of 100 amperes for a current density range. Then we calculated the heat generated by Jolly effect after one second of heating uh, for the passage of 100, 100 ampere, amperes. We considered that the Jolly effect was equal to the sensible heating and we isolated the final temperature. So knowing the specific heat, knowing the specific heat, the Jolly effect, the mass of the materials and the initial temperature, we could determine the electrode final temperature after one second of resistive heating. So our first results were that we found that a iron electrode to a, an iron electrode would need about two meters to produce 100 amperes at melting temperatures and this huge diameter or these huge elect electrode dimensions are because iron would have a small current density at his melting temperature. When we, when we increase the emission temperature to boiling temperature, this diameter would fall to about two acceptable values. But we, the question is, can this smaller diameter reach the emission temperature quickly after one second of Joule effect heating. So this graphic will answer this question for us. In the y-axis we have the diameter, in the x-axis we have the temperature. These emission diameter cur curves shows the reduction of the diameter required to produce 100 amperes with the temperature, temperature increase, while the Jolly effect heating curves shows the maximum temperature reached by a electrode of a specific diameter. And for we did we know that for iron we it would be theoretically a, uh, possible to produce 100 amperes with a two meters two meter diameter electrode but this electrode would never be heated by Jolly effect quickly to emission temperature and we also observed that it is possible to produce 100 amperes with a with smaller an electrode of smaller dimensions near near boiling temperatures but even these electrodes wouldn't be heated by Jolly effect only smaller diameters would be heated by Jolly effect because of the, the increase in the electrical resistance due to, due to the reduction of the transversal area of the electrode. But this emission temperature would be above boiling point for iron declassifying this material as a non-consumable electrode material. Doing the same analysis for tungsten, we observed that um, 
it can be heated to it can be heated to emission temperatures below boiling point to produce 100 amperes but it would still need to be above melting point proceeding this analysis to graphite we observe that graphite the heating happens for larger diameters electrodes and it happens because of graphite's resistivity that is higher and we observe that graphite the el the graphite electrode can produce 100 amperes at temperatures below its sublimation point we shouldn't consider or uh, we shouldn't presume that the graphite electrode would last longer than the tungsten electrode because it would emit above melting point because these two materials work under different atmospheres usually tungsten electrodes work under uh, inert gas protection and graphite is usually exposed to atmosphere Proceeding the same analysis to, to a tungsten electrode doped with thoria and comparing its characteristics to the pure tungsten um, characteristics, we see that uh, the doping reduces the, the work function. And it means that for the same diameter, it produces the same current intensity at smaller temperatures and that's why the electrode doped with thoria is able to, to produce the desired current intensity below melting point while as we saw pure tungsten would need to be above melting point this result is supported by practical evidence that the doped electrode keeps its sharpened edge after some operation time while the pure tungsten electrode gets a bold edge after some operation time so as conclusion as conclusions we we saw that despite the simplifications the approach applied was able to demonstrate that some materials can and other, and other cannot be used as thermionically emitting materials in, in arc welding. For instance, although iron electrode could theoretically emit below boiling temperature, either its dimensions are excessive or it cannot be heated up to the required emission temperature by the process. As only iron electrodes of very small diameters can be heated by the process, the required emission temperatures to produce a given current needs to be above its boiling temperature, the classifying iron as a non-consumable electrode material. On the contrary, tungsten and graphite can emit below boiling point with practical electrode diameters. And the electrode doped with thoria as its emission temperature reduced, preserving the electrode sharpened edge during welding. For extra information, please check the upcoming edition of the Brazilian magazine Soldagem in Espeção at the link below. And if you have any doubts, please don't hesitate in contacting us. Thank you very much for your attention.